Welcome back to this course on organic chemistry in biology and drug development. Now, last time in the last session basically what we have discussed is that uh, the first stage in the flow of information uh, in the biological system. We have read about this central dogma in biology. So, in order for the cell to divide before that uh, several steps have to be taken and the first step is that you have to copy the existing DNA into dotted DNAs and that was we, we know that that was called replication and the replication process is semi conservative. Now, the, what is the next step? The next step is now the, the um, what is called transcription that means from the DNA now the information has to flow and according to the information stored in the DNA you will make the uh, what are called ribonucleic acids. Okay. Now, just few words about ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acids are little different from the deoxyribonucleic acid and it is clear from the name that in ribonucleic acid what you have is the ribose unit that means, the 2 prime and the 3 prime hydroxy groups are present in ribonucleic acid. Okay. So, it is a full ribose. So, that 2 prime OH is there and the base and the phosphodiester linkage okay. that is there. Uh, so, one difference is here and the other difference is just one of the bases where thymine is replaced by uracil. Now, because of the presence of this wedge, you should remember that RNAs are more are little bit unstable as compared to the uh, their counterpart that is the deoxy ribonucleotides that is the RNA uh, the DNA and uh, the reason is that that this wedge can hydrolyze the phosphodiester bond. So, this is connected via phosphodiester bond and these two prime which can hydrolyze the phosphodiester bond by a process what is known as neighboring group participation that is very common in organic reactions. Okay. So, now let us start that we are going to talk about transcription. Now, transcription is the process where DNA where a DNA is copied into RNA that is what is called transcription. Now, the DNA is we know that this is double stranded, but RNAs that is going to uh, be made from the, the DNA is single stranded. Okay. Now, the question is that how this process takes place because there are two strands of DNA. The first question is there are two strands of DNA and one strand runs from 5 prime to 3 prime and the other in the anti parallel direction 3 prime to 5 prime. So, when there is and these two strands are complementary now and their complementarity comes from the Watson big uh, uh, Watson Crick base pairing. Okay. Now, when it is trans when it is transcribed to make the a mRNA. So, a mRNA will also have a basically they, they will also have a uh, direction suppose this is the 5 prime to 3 prime. Now, the question is which of these strands is actually copied because information is stored in both the strands although these informations are complementary, but still when it is transcribed into RNA one of the strands information has to be copied to make the the RNA. Okay. Now, so that is the first question. So, the problems I will just uh, write here first of all which strand of the double stranded DNA is copied that is the number one question that we have to solve. Number two is 
that now when this copying takes place means transcription takes place now you have well defined size of the RNA. So, this is different from the replication process because replication process needs to copy the entire piece of DNA, but when RNA is made it is it is made from some segment of the DNA it is not that the full DNA has to be copied. So, part of the DNA has to be copied and transcribed into the RNA. Okay. So, if that be the case how will how will the enzyme which is making these RNA molecules how will the enzyme which is making the RNA molecules. So, that means, it is a polymerization reaction now instead of DNA polymerase what you have is RNA polymerase how the enzyme RNA polymerase knows where to start, where to start. So, there is a problem of how do we know suppose this is the information that needs to be transcribed here, but how does the enzyme knows that we have to that that it has to start from this this site. Okay. So, that is the second uh, question and number 3 is that the what is the direction of the synthesis of the mRNA that is um, again that is 5 prime to 3 prime. So, there is no change in that like the oligonucleotides are joint and the DNA chain extends in a 5 prime to 3 prime uh, direction that means, the 3 prime hydroxy attacks the 5 prime triphosphate. Okay. The same thing happens here. The fourth question is that the the fourth question is as we have started that there is a problem of where is the starting point how does it know where to start similarly you have to end at some point of time so how does the enzyme know where to stop that means there should be a termination mechanism a termination. Okay. So, this can be called a termination mechanism and this can be called an initiation mechanism or an initiation state. Okay. So, these are uh, these are the some of the questions that can be asked while we uh, describe transcription. Okay. Now, let us go one by one. The first is that which strand of the DNA is copied. Okay. Now, remember there are two strands of DNA. So, now I do not write it in the helical shape suppose I write it in this fashion in a linear fashion suppose this is your 5 prime to 3 prime end and this is the 3 prime to 5 prime end. Now, if one of them actually acts as the template on which the RNA polymerase works to make the the RNA. Okay. Now, suppose the RNA polymerase is uh, is bound to these these strands the lower strand which runs from 3 prime to 5 prime and then make the start making the RNA. So, suppose if this is the strand which is copied then there will be no direction problem this is 5 prime to 3 prime that means, the direction of synthesis is following this 5 prime to 3 prime. The number 2 is that that means, this is now acting as a template strand. So, I can call that as a template strand because that acts as a template and this RNA is also called a DNA dependent RNA polymerase that means, its, its template is actually a DNA molecule a, a deoxy oligonucleotide. Okay. So, this is a template strand and this will be the non template strand non template strand. Okay. Uh, so, that means, we are now distinguishing between the two strands the strands which is 
copied to make the RNA is called the template strand. That DNA strand is called template and the other strand is called non-template. Now, there is some interesting feature if once you say that this is a template strand that means, when the RNA is copied it will take the bases which will be complementary to the bases that are present in the template strand. Just an example suppose your template strand has say A you know that uh, in DNA A T G C suppose this is the sequence at part sequence of the template strand. Okay. So, this runs from 3 prime to 5 prime. Now, the RNA that will be made here will be will have a sequence that will be now in RNA instead of T you have U. So, that will be U and then A that will be C and that will be G. Now, if you now look at what will be the what was the sequence of the non template strand at that point it will be the non template strand will have a sequence which will be T A G I uh, sorry C sorry C and then uh, and then G. So, because that will be complementary to the to the template strand. So, that will be T A C G again I repeat that suppose your template strand has a sequence of A T G C. So, the RNA that will be formed that will be synthesized will be U A C G and we know that the this is the complementary strand which is now the non com template strand that will have a sequence of T A C G. That means, the sequences are virtually same except where T is replaced by U in the RNA. Okay. So, that means, if I now just have a problem give you a short problem uh, and uh, suppose I have a I have a template strand I have a non template strand which is 5 prime to 3 prime and suppose the sequence is A U G A T A. Suppose this is the part sequence of that, but remember this is I told you this is a non template strand. Okay. So, what will be the RNA that will be synthesized? The problem is write the sequence of the RNA that will be synthesized. Now, if you go by ab initio method, that means I want to write what is the template strand sequence. So, that will be 3 prime to 5 prime and this will be now that will be T that will be oh sorry it can be it cannot be G U there is a slight mistake. So, that is T. Okay. So, and the sequence of the non template strand will be T A C T A T. So, that will be a sequence of the non template. Now, you write the sequence of the A mRNA. So, A mRNA will be 5 prime to so that will be T and it will be A then it will be U instead of T this will be G this will be A and this will be U and this will be A. So, that will be the sequence of the RNA strand that, that will be transcribed. Okay. Now, if you some people may not need to write this. See if you now compare the sequence of the non template and the A mRNA you see that it is just basically same instead of T you have just replaced that with U. So, if you know the sequence of the template strand without going into the non template strand you can write the sequence of what is the RNA sequence that will be made. Okay. So, that is why there are other names uh, given to these uh, template strand and the non template strand. This is also called uh, this is also called the non coding strand, because whatever coding is here it is not the same as this. So, this is a non coding strand and this is called the coding strand, because the codes match with each other. 
except that T and U that difference will be there otherwise uh, otherwise it is same base sequence is same and there is another name here this is called the antisense strand antisense strand and this is called the sense strand okay so all these names you have to be uh, very careful because there are different times different names are given so antisense strand means non coding strand non coding strand means template strand and non template strand means the coding strand and or it is also called the same strand okay so now let us move further the question is how does the polymerase know that uh, the rna polymerase know that where to bind and where to start okay now there are pictures here but i will explain basically what what happens in the real scenario so suppose you have this duplex dna so this is this is 3 prime this is 5 prime so this is your dna which needs to be copied and transcribed into the rna now what happens there is a big RNA polymerase now, which will traverse to the, it is basically it is searching for a particular sequence and once it have that sequence that is what is called a, uh, a promoter region. That means, there is something which is um, some sequence is there, it is usually a 6 base pair sequence when the polymerase suppose this is the polymerase polymerase sees that sequence then it binds here okay actually polymerase rna polymerase is a very big very big molecule it is uh, is a very big molecule it actually can cover it i'll show you the graph uh, it will it can cover up to up to the initiation point initial sorry initiate initiation point that means the rna was actually traversing on the surface so when it is traversing on the surface there is some sequence it was looking for once it sees that sequence it binds there okay and then its arms actually the whole molecule stretches far beyond this what sequence is here and then this is suppose the initial initiation point that means the rna synthesis will start from here and then the rna the bases are added one after the oligo that oligonucleotides in this case only oligonucleotides they are added one after another now this region is basically it is called the upstream region. Why upstream? Because your synthesis is going in the reverse direction. So, actually the start of the synthesis it is on the upstream direction whatever sequence we are talking about which the RNA polymerase recognizes. Okay. So, this is in the upstream. The question is what is the what is the distance between means distance means in terms of base in terms of number of bases what is this gap usually the first amino acid uh, the first sorry the first uh, nucleotide which is added which is the which is the 5 prime end the terminal 5 prime end of the rna that is going to be synthesized or biosynthesized to be precise or transcribed that is called the first nucleotide is called plus 1 then the that means if i have a the rna ultimately synthesize suppose what is having a sequence of a u g c a u then this is called the plus 1 base this is the plus 2 so in that way you are increasing the number of bases that to be added so basically the initiation point the first one is called plus 1 and then this is upstream. So, this is upstream as I said how is the 
how much it is far from the plus 1 site that is usually minus 10. So, that means, from here to there usually there are about uh, 10 nucleotide uh, bases are there. Okay. Now, this region where the RNA this is very important because if this is not present then RNA cannot tell where to start. Okay. So, the first the RNA has to find this sequence this is what is called the promoter region promoter region. Okay. Now, that means, what is a promoter? The promoter is basically a, 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 cons, a sequence of bases which is usually 6 base long and that is where the RNA polymerase binds and accordingly, uh, accordingly 10 bases downstream T RNA synthesis starts. Okay. So, that is the promoter. Now, this there are people have found the scientists have found that uh, that there are other other regions also uh, that is present in the in the DNA which can also act as promoter sites. I will just go into that before that I want to just uh, spell out what is uh, I will just read out what is uh, written in this slide. So, the first slide uh, first step is initiation means that means it has to bind to the bind to the promoter and then once it binds to the promoter the DNA double helix has to melt has to melt because you have to separate that into the template and the and the non template strand and the template strand is then copied and RNA is made. So, the first step is binding of the RNA polymerase as I said to the double stranded DNA then slide that means, what is slide that means, it has to now it, it just slides here and find the promoter region. Once it finds the promoter region it knows that 10 bases downstream that it has to start the synthesis of the RNA. Okay. Find the promoter unwind the double helix and then synthesis of the RNA strand at the start site initiation site this position is called the position plus 1. So, I think that is more or less clear, but apart from that. So, it is uh, schematically shown here. See you see this is the double stranded DNA and uh, there is a it is DNA promoter site is somewhere here and then the DNA gets melted and, but not the complete melting of the DNA it is what is called a bubble. This is like a, uh, a bubble that is called that is formed a transient bubble that is to be created that means, the DNA is not is not denatured or melted fully it is like this and then the RNA polymerase suppose is up to here. Now, it starts the synthesis of the uh, sorry starts the synthesis of the RNA and as it synthesis this RNA polymerase moves also further and this transient bubble will now also proceed along with it. Now, the bubble has shifted to somewhere here. Okay. So, as the RNA synthesis takes place the RNA polymerase moves from 5 prime to 3 prime direction and resulting in the movement of the transient bubble. What is the bubble? Bubble is basically where a region where which is inflated and because why inflated because the two strands are further apart because the DNA strands have been melted that is why this is called a bubble. Okay. Now, there are two kinds of say there are two kinds of uh, major uh, division is prokaryotes they are simple uh, simple cells where there is no further inner compartmentalization and in the other there is the eukaryotes. Now, all this transcription replication and the next step was translation 
from RNA to protein all these are very well studied in prokaryotes. Eukaryotes things become more complicated. I think for this course what we will we'll try to stick to the mechanism that uh, happens the process that happens along with whatever mechanism is required uh, in a prokaryotic system. Okay. Now, the prokaryotes first of all use a single RNA polymerase enzyme. Now, this is uh, also important I think we have not mentioned anything yet that there are major three classes of RNA. One is the messenger RNA, another is ribosomal RNA and the third one is tRNAs, but there are other types of RNA SI RNA, MI RNA all those, those are also there, but for this transcription translation and um, uh, we do not we just stick to these three broad classification of RNAs, because that is what uh, for the transcription and translation we need all these three types of RNAs. And for all this in the synthesis of all these types of RNAs there is only requirement a single RNA polymerase enzyme synthesizes all types of RNA. Okay. Now, let me just quickly briefly tell you what is the function of these RNAs mRNA is the is the template for protein synthesis. That means, according to the base sequence in mRNA the protein will be synthesized and the amino acid sequence in the protein will depend upon the base sequence in the mRNA. R RNA the ribosomal RNA this is called messenger RNA this is ribosomal RNA ribosomal RNA actually helps the mRNA to bind to the ribosome. Now, what is ribosome? Ribosome is where the protein synthesis takes place that means, the translation is taking place there and uh, mRNA it so the so the binding process between the mRNA and the rRNA and the to the ribosome is dependent on the rRNA. Besides the rRNA also uh, helps to synthesize the proteins. It is also um, acts as a catalyst to make the peptide bond. We will we'll go to that uh, little later. Okay. And there is a third one that is the tRNA called transfer RNA. What it does? It transfers the required amino acids, required amino acids to a going to a peptide chain that means, the peptide grows. So, all the addition uh, addition of amino acids uh, is basically through the tRNA what tRNA has tRNA takes up the uh, takes up the amino acid and then brings it to the ribosome and then the amino acid is delivered to make the peptide. Okay. Eukaryotes have on the other hand eukaryotes have three RNA polymerases. Okay. RNA polymerase one that synthesizes rRNA that means, ribosomal RNA polymerase two messenger RNA polymerase three tRNA and also uh, ribosomal RNA part of the ribosomal RNA is also synthesized there. I think I already told what is a promoter the sequence of uh, base uh, DNA needed for RNA polymerase to bind to the template and accomplish the initiation reaction. I think that is um, at this point that will that is uh, all what we need. Okay. Uh, now, what is the sequence of this promoter region that was the we, we did not tell it what is the sequence of the promoter region. I told you that this is the up this is the upstream region. So, there is something called a minus 10 box that means, there are some base sequence here that is called minus 10 box and that is also called David Pribnow box. 
because Pribno box or, uh, you do not write David, David Pribno is the person who uh, first discovered this aspect of transcription, this binding of uh, RNA polymerase and so there is at the minus 10 upstream there is this sequence uh, which is present and that is called the now that is known as Pribno, Pribno box. Okay. Minus 10. Now, what is this sequence? The usual sequence is for the Pribno box is T A T A A T G, that is the that is the sequence. Okay. But I let me tell you that this sequence is not consensus, that means all prokaryotes uh, may not have the same sequence, whatever is written here. So, at this point, what you know that at the there is a Pribno box which has got a particular sequence that may vary a little bit from one bacteria to another bacteria, but, um, but there is some, uh, some consensus sequence uh, at different locations. Like in one bacteria suppose if this is the Pribno box, then you need a T at this point, but if you screen several bacteria, you will find that may be 70 percent of the bacteria has T here. Similarly, at A you may have 80 percent that 80 percent of the bacteria has A here. That means, this is little bit variable. Okay. Now, if it is um, this is little bit variable and this is very important this variation actually uh, is translated into the capacity of the RNA, RNA uh, polymerase to bind to the DNA because stronger the binding to the DNA, then your transcription process will be uh, will be will uh, will be expressed uh, in a better way and weaker the binding the transcription process uh, may not be that efficient. Okay. So, that means, this transcription process can be modulated by changing the sequence of the Pribno box. Okay. So, that is why this promoter region uh, can be manipulated and you can have different expression levels. This is called expression level of uh, RNAs and you know if there is different expression level of RNA level of RNA, then there will be different expression level of the protein because ultimately that is what is translated into the protein. Okay. Now, apart from this minus 10 box, uh, scientists have also identified another recognition domain that is called minus 35 box. That means, there is another box which is minus th that is 35 upstream and then that sequence is again I said this is not sacrosanct, but uh, more or less uh, the consensus sequence is T T G A C A. Okay. So, that means, now what we are telling that in prokaryotes there are two types of uh, sequences, one is at the minus 35 and there is then minus 10 box that is the Pribno box and then there is the initiation point, okay. initiation point. I think I already told this that some this, this sequence what is uh, written here about the uh, promoters in bacteria and now this. Now, let us come to the, uh, the this template. I think that also I said that this is called same strand, this is that the also called coding strand, non template strand and this is called DNA template strand or and this is called antisense strand and this is what is the, if this is the case that this is the antisense strand, then you can straight away write what will be the sequence of the RNA trans transcript that means, the RNA that is transcribed. Achha. I think again the same thing the promoter region and all these things. Uh, you also should know that in case of eukaryotes also there is a uh, there is a promoter region uh, promoter region, but uh, it may vary from species to species. Okay. That what we are saying that consensus sequence strongest promoters match the consensus. That means, whatever we are saying here 
that matches with the if that matches with the uh, whatever is present in the bacteria. So, that whatever RNA will be synthesized that will be called up mutation that means, the your ultimate expression level will increase. And if there is less consensus here that means, the promoter region does not bind that well then that is what is called down mutation virtually any mutation that alters a match with the consensus. But the consequence of this is why it is called down mutation up mutation that is basically the expression level of the final uh, transcribed RNA and that will have a consequence of the finally transcribed protein. Okay. So, now we know the stages of uh, transcription that is shown here first the template recognition is there and then uh, as I said this is quite big. Now, the RNA polymerase this is interesting it has got it has got a quaternary structure there are 5 subunits 2 alpha subunit 1 beta subunit another beta prime subunit and another is a sigma factor. Now, when the sigma factor is present that is what is called the hollow enzyme. So, you know what is hollow enzyme what hollow enzyme is basically uh, it is applicable to the enzyme chemistry that the, this is also an enzyme the enzyme which requires other than the enzyme a small molecule and then to act. So, when they are combined with each other that is called a hollow enzyme and uh, the other is apoenzyme that means, when the small molecule which is a cofactor or coenzyme that goes off. In this case when the sigma is present in the RNA polymerase that means, the RNA polymerase have 5 domains I said uh, 5 uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Suppose, this is your sigma. Now, this is what is called the hollow enzyme. When sigma is present, it is through that sigma the polymerase recognizes the promoter chain. Okay. And then as the recognition is there, then the sigma falls off. So, when the sigma falls off, that means, this binding is no longer there, this is the promoter region this is your promoter region. So, now the polymerase is free. So, it can now melt the DNA that means, forms the the bubble uh, forms the bubble and then slowly transcribe and then one by one bring the uh, RNA bases and then form the RNA growing RNA chain. And then as it uh, enters the the terminal stage. Number the next question is how it terminates this RNA uh, RNA chain synthesis. Okay. So, there must be something here which the this uh, RNA polymerase is recognizing. Now, what happens I will show you in a um, I again this this steps again that is repeat first is RNA template recognition second is initiation, third is elongation, bring more bases, synthesize and as you uh, as the RNA moves polymerase moves forward, the DNA uh, gets melted that means, the double helix becomes uh, separated with each other forming a transcription bubble and then finally, termination. So, these are the polymerase reaches the end. Now, how do the how do the uh, polymerase knows that it has reached the end. So, what happens when the uh, when this polymerase which is making the RNA that uh, is slowly moving towards this direction. Okay. So, the RNA is if the polymerase moves in this direction the RNA is synthesized like this this is your uh, 5 prime end and this is your 3 prime end and this is the movement of the RNA polymerase. Now, towards the end there is a sequence in the RNA which can form what is called a hairpin. That means, some sequences are there typical sequences are there that can form a hairpin. Remember I told you RNA is usually single stranded, but sometimes what happens 
that some portion suppose this portion of the RNA is complementary to the sequence that is present in this. Then what can happen the RNA can take a take a shape like this because this is complementary to that part. So, now it can form a hair pin this is called hair pin that means the pin that is the the clip that is used uh, to tie up uh, the hair. So, that is called hair pin sometimes stem loop structure. So, it forms a the sequence is such that it can form a, a hair pin okay. and then after the hair pin there are lot of lot of u's are there that means uracils are there. Okay. Now, what is the consequence of that? First of all if this happens then the RNA polymerase was actually moving towards this direction. Now, it suddenly sees a loop something. So, there is a barrier here okay. and once it sees the barrier the RNA polymerase stops bringing more uh, bringing more uh, oligonucleotides and if and it falls off. Now, this the why there is lot of use here because we know that u is actually complementary to a. So, there is a hydrogen bonding between a and u I learned it was in DNA a and t. So, if that be the case then what happens you know that a and u are actually having only two hydrogen bonds. So, to release the to or to melt this part of the uh, duplex this is a RNA, RNA DNA duplex that will be easier RNA DNA because there are only u's here the stronger hydrogen bonding pair is the G c. So, if there is lot of G c s then it will be it will require much more energy to separate this RNA from the DNA. So, that is why what nature has done for termination that this is one mechanism that it forms a at the terminator side it forms a hair pin uh, because there are complementary you see G c G c G c because it forms a strong hair pin because they are complementary to each other and then there is only use lot of use are there and these use actually help to melt the or to release the RNA from the DNA very easily. Okay. There is another mechanism that is also operative that is called uh, rho uh, that is rho dependent release where there is an enzyme which is called rho protein that that binds here and then uh, using ATP as the energy source it releases the RNA from the DNA from the RNA DNA duplex. So, that is what is the um, how the termination takes place. So, basically what we have now uh, known that in the transcription just to summarize the first step is recognition and binding at the promoter region. Here I just mentioned that the promoter region I have given you a particular sequence, but uh, that sequence uh, the promoter region is usually again minus 10 base pair upstream and then also minus 35 that is in prokaryotes. By the way this is also called because there are a lot of T's there. So, that is called a Tata box because lot of uh, T's A's are there. Okay. So, this recognition uh, in case of uh, eukaryotes we are not uh, very concerned about eukaryotes, but this is much more complicated again there are different types of uh, promoter regions, but they are wide apart in eukaryotes one could be at minus 40 another could be at minus 70 80 all those uh, or maybe 100. So, there is a large gap between the two. So, that is the first step second step is initiation starts sigma falls off that sigma sigma protein as I said sigma falls off. Then because until it falls off the RNA polymerase cannot move. So, that part has to be taken care of sigma falls off 
RNA polymerase moves from what? From 3 prime to 5 prime direction and synthesis of RNA takes place from 5 prime to 3 prime direction and then finally, termination. Termination can be of two mechanisms, one is a hairpin followed by lot of use to melt the DNA or to release the DNA from the from the RNA DNA hybrid or by a mechanism which is dependent on a rho factor rho factor. Okay. So, that is all about transcription. Thank you.